Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Python. In the last video we have talked about polymorphism, right? Which simply means you have one thing which will behave in a different way. Or you can say one thing and multiple forms, right? That is many forms. Now in this video, we'll talk about the first way of doing that and that is your duct typing. I know that's a weird word, right? Duct typing. We have this famous line which is, if there's a bird which is walking like a duck, which is quacking like a duck, and which is swimming like a duck, uh, that bird is a duck, right? Which simply means it doesn't matter if it's a duck or not, what matters is the behavior of that bird, if it is matching with duck, that's a duck, right? Now, how do you implement that in programming? So what we will do here is, let's take an example. Let's say if I have x equal to five. Now when you talk about a type, now in Python we have a concept of dynamic typing, which simply means the type you can mention later. Example, when you say x equal to five, the type which we are representing now is integer. But what if you say x equal to, let's say, Navin? Are we changing the type of x here? See, that's not the case. What is happening here is, when you say five, in your memory, you got a space which is of type integer. When you say Naveen, in your memory, you got a space which is of type string. The x is just a name to it, okay? So when you say x equal to five, there is an object of type integer, you are just naming it as x. Later when you say you got Naveen, you got some space in your memory and you are representing that with X. X is just a name to it, okay? So we don't have specific type to X. The moment you say type of X, you're actually getting the type of five. When you say the type of X, you're getting the type of Naveen, right? So that's one thing you have to remember. The moment you give a variable name, that's just a name to a memory. Now to understand duct typing, what we'll do is we'll take another example. To explain this, what we'll do is I will create a class and we'll name this class as laptop. And this laptop class will have a method, which is let's say code. So in this code, what I will do is I want to execute my code, right? So as a programmer, what we do is we write code, right? We write code and we compile it, we run it and we get the output at the end. But then to do that, we also need an IDE, which is Integrated Development Environment. And in this case, if you want to write a code, you need to pass an IDE. So we are expecting in the arguments that someone will pass an IDE to us. And using this IDE, I will say IDE.execute. So the question is, the IDE is of what type? Is it a type of integer? Is it a type of float? Is it a type of string? Now, of course, right, when you say execute, that means this is something which is not there in the existing classes which you have. That means the type of IDE is something very unique. It is something which is user is defining, right? That means if you want to create this object IDE, you need to create your own class. Let me get a class here and I will call this class as PyCharm. Now, for different languages, we use different IDEs. In fact, for one language, we have multiple options, right? Example, when you work on Java, Maybe you'll be using NetBeans, Eclipse, IntelliJ. For Python as well, we have different IDEs. We are using PyCharm here because it works well. Now, when you say PyCharm, of course, it will have a method, right? So let me define a method, which is def execute. So you can see we have these two statements. The moment you say execute, it will say compiling and running. That's what you do, right? Your code gets compiled and your code get run. Now, will this work? Of course not, because we are not calling anything. So when you run this code, you will not get any output. Let me just try it out. I will right click and say run demo. You can see there's no output because we are not calling methods. Let me call code. The way you call code is by creating the object of laptop first because you cannot call code without laptop. So I will say lap1 is equal to laptop and with the help of lap1 now you can call code. So you can say lap1.code but there's one problem here which is inside a code you have to pass an argument which is of IDE. Oh that's a question now. How do you pass an IDE here? So what I will do is first you need to create an object of IDE. You will say IDE, of course, you can have different names here, but let me go with IDE. So IDE equal to, this will be of type PyCharm. So the type of IDE we are working with is PyCharm, right? Which is user defined, of course. And then when you are calling code, you have to pass IDE. And now it should work. You can see from this code, you got compiling and running. So the type of IDE here is PyCharm, but is it fixed? Can we change the type of IDE later? Maybe let's say we have one more IDE. Let's say in future I'm creating my own editor, okay, which is way better than PyCharm, maybe. <laughs> and in that as well, we have the same method, uh, let's say execute. And in that, I'm doing some extra stuff, you know. So my IDE also does spell check. Maybe PyCharm does that. My IDE also does what? A convention checks, you know, the name of the variable and different stuff. And then it also does compiling and running, right? So my IDE does extra stuff. Now what if, 
if I want to change the type of ID, is the ID type fixed to PyCharm? Not exactly because this is dynamic typing, right? So you can replace this ID type from PyCharm to editor provided you have that method which is execute, right? It doesn't matter which class object you're passing. What matters is that object should have the execute method, right? Because in ID we are saying execute. So now even if you change from my charm to my editor, there's no problem. The code will still work, right? Provided you have that method, okay? So if you should be having this method which is execute, and that's the case. If there's a bird, and if that bird behaves like a duck, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it swims like a duck, it should be a duck. In the same way, if there is an object which is IDE, and it has a method execute, that's it. We are not concerned about which class object it is. What we are concerned about, it should have that method which is execute, and that is called as duck typing. Right. I know it is amazing and if you're coming from different background like Java so we have a concept of interfaces right so that's what we do we create interface and we have this my editor and PyCharm as a class which will implement that interface but if you are new to this programming don't worry that's the Java part right this is simple so this is how it works I hope you got something from this video so let me know in the comment section if you have any more questions and do subscribe for further videos bye bye